Great morning, church. It's a brand new day. As we gather together as one church and one family, let's spend this wonderful time celebrating Resurrection Sunday. Although we may not see each other, we are celebrating together with unity in our hearts. As we continue to face challenging times of uncertainty, may we continue to fill our hearts of God's love and presence. A love so great that fills our hearts with assurance and hope, knowing that we have a God that is greater than all of these things that we face, a God that has great power. As we are reminded by the verse from Philippians 3, 10 to 12. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of what of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Knowing that, we know that we're looking forward to brighter days ahead. It may look uncertain, but knowing the power of Christ and the unconditional love that He has given us, we are confident to face the future with that amazing power. Let's all stand together as one family as we start singing His Amazing Grace. Thank you. 
celebrate Resurrection Sunday, we are continuously reminded of the greatness of God and what He has done at the cross. Philippians 2, 6 to 11, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place, gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue sh acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. Let us all sing this song for the glory of our God the Father.
Magandang umaga po. Happy Resurrection Sunday. And we always declare every Resurrection Sunday, He is risen. He is risen. Now, wherever you are right now, say it out loud with me, with your family. He is risen. Now, you can do better than that. Let's say it with excitement. Once again. He is risen. That's what we should always declare, not only every Resurrection Sunday, but every day of our lives. He is risen. Because we don't worship a dead Savior. We worship a living Savior. Now, we all know what happened 2,000 years ago. The Lord Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and on the third day, He rose again from the dead, and then after 40 days, He went up, He ascended to heaven. The question is, what is He doing at the moment? This morning, we will talk about what the Lord is doing in our present times. Open your Bibles in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 23 to 25. And it says here, the former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that your word is not bound despite the crisis, that we could still freely proclaim it, that we are not limited by space, by location. And I know, O oh Lord, that uh, despite the limitations, your word is not bound. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege of preaching your word in every home, listening to this online worship. We ask for your wisdom that we may understand. We ask for your strength that we may be able to obey. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, tayo po mga Pilipino, we have a saying. Nasa kama ka na. Bakit lilipat ka pa sa banig? Hindi ko alam kung narinig na ng mga kabataan ngayon yan. Eh. Nasa kama ka na, lilipat ka pa ba sa banig? You are already sleeping on the bed. Why do you want to go back to sleeping on a mat, on the floor? It basically means you are now in a better condition. Why do you like to go back to your former condition? I believe that that's the same message of the letter to the Hebrews. The original readers of this letter were Jews, kaya nga Hebrews, Jews who have heard the gospel and claim to have put their faith in the Lord as their Savior. Sadly, as they faced persecution, they were asking, was it wrong to live my former religion, Judaism, to embrace Christianity. Was it wrong to leave my former religion to embrace a new religion? The book of Hebrews explained that it's not merely going from one religion to another. It's really going from a religion to a relationship. 
Yes, Christianity is also a religion. But it's more than a religion. For we have a relationship with the Lord we worship in Christianity. Now, there's one word to summarize the letter to the Hebrews. It's the word better. Sa mga old ones, naalala pa ba ninyo yung isang commercial, yung betterer, di ba? Better. According to the talk through the New Testament by Bruce Wilkinson and Kenneth Boa, Christ is better than the angels for they worship him. He is better than Moses, for he created him. He is better than the Aaronic priesthood, for his sacrifice was once for all time. He is better than the law, for he mediates a better covenant. For the Jew, the high priest serves as a go-between. If I may use the word, a mediator between the nation Israel and God. But in Hebrews 7, it is argued that our Lord Jesus Christ has a better or greater priesthood. You know why? Because He is risen. Verse 23 tells us that the former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. There were many high priests in succession. The high priest would serve and then he would die. They would appoint another high priest and then he would die. They all died. They could no longer continue serving as priests because they were prevented by death. They have to be replaced. And it happened again and again. But if you read verse 24, it says that the Lord holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Now, look at the conjunction, but. Death prevented them from continuing as priests, but it did not prevent our Lord from serving as our great high priest. Instead of death preventing him, he prevailed over death when he rose from the dead. That's why the Lord has a better priesthood, has a greater priesthood, because he can never be replaced. Those priests were not permanent, but Jesus has a permanent priesthood. Again, let's look at verse 24. It says, But, he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Alam niyo po, in the Greek, the word permanently was a legal word. It means inviolable, unalterable, non-transferable. Ang ibig po sabihin, hindi mababali, hindi mababago o mapapalitan at hindi may lilipat sa iba. Sabi nga po ni uh, William Barclay sa kanyang The Letter to the Hebrews, it describes something which belongs to one person and cannot ever be transferred to, an, to anyone else. At alam niyo yung salitang permanently sa Greek, it was used to describe absolute scientific law which can never be violated. The principles on which the very universe is built and holds together. And so to the writer of uh, to the to, so the writer to the Hebrew says that the, that the priesthood of Jesus is something which can never be taken from him, something that no one else can ever possess, something that is as lasting as the laws which hold the universe together. Jesus is and will always remain the only way to God. He is the high priest forever.
because he lives forever. His life is limitless. Now, there's something more with the phrase, because he continues forever. The word continues does not only mean to remain in office, but also to remain in the capacity of a servant. Again, let me quote Barclay. In eternity, as he was in time, Jesus exists to be of service to all people, and that is why he is the complete Savior. On earth, he served men and women and gave his life for them. Diba nga, sabi niya, I came not to be served, but to serve and to give my ransom, but to give my life as a ransom. On earth, he served men and women and gave his life for them. In heaven, he still exists to make intercession for them. He is the priest forever. The one who is forever opening the door to the friendship of God and is forever the great servant of all. Not only that he holds the position as priest forever, he also serves forever. Now, the Lord has already finished um, his work on the cross. And as the high priest, as the high priest, as the great high priest, he offered a better sacrifice. In fact, he offered himself as the sacrifice. At mababasa nga po natin sa Hebrews 10, 11. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Throughout their lives, until they died, day in and day out, the priest would offer the same sacrifices over and over again. Pero nung sabi, those sacrifices can never take away sins. They could not even save themselves. Anong sabi sa Hebrews 7.27? They offered daily sacrifices for their own sins first, and then for the sins of the people. But the Lord doesn't have to offer sacrifices for himself because he is the Savior and he is the sacrifice himself. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12, it tells us, But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. His death on the cross was a once and for all sacrifice. He did not have to do it again. He does not have to die on the cross again. For it was his single sacrifice for sins. And that's the sacrifice that takes away the sin of the world. Note also the contrast. Pasahin natin ulit. And every priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Anong sabi dyan? These temporal priests stand daily at his service. Alam po ba ninyo that there was no chair at all inside and outside the temple? Kasi nga ang ibig sabihin, their work was never finished. But look at what the Lord, our eternal high priest, did after his sacrifice on the cross. He sat down at the right hand of God. His work was finished. He accomplished it. And that's why on the cross, he declared, it is finished. And so, since his sacrifice was the ultimate and final sacrifice, 
the once and for all sacrifice, what is the Lord doing now in heaven? How does he serve as our great high priest? He serves through his present intercessory work. We read this in verse 25. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Notice the words, consequently, since he always lives. The basis of our confidence is the truth that he rose from the dead and that he always lives. And what does he do? What does he do as our priest? As Abrito, since he always lives to make intercession for them. He is praying for us. He is praying for you and me at the right hand of the Father. His prayers are unlimited for his life is limitless. Ulitin po natin. His prayers are unlimited for his life is limitless. When the Lord was here on earth, according to Luke chapter 5 verse 16, he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. His ministry, his life and ministry, it's marked by prayer through and through. And during his last supper with his disciples, the Lord told, told Peter in Luke chapter 22, verse 31 to 32, the Lord told Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. And then in the Garden of Gethsemane, in his high priestly prayer, not only that he prayed for his disciples, but he also prayed for us. According to uh, John chapter 17, verse 20 to 21, I do not ask for this only. And he was referring to the 12 disciples. I do not ask for this only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Now, did you believe in the Lord because of the testimony of the apostles? Because of what they have written in the Bible? Then those who believe in me through their word, includes you I didn't I do not ask for this only but also for those who will believe in me through their word that they may all be one just as you father are in me and I in you that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me he prayed for all believers he prayed for you and me now that he is seated at the right hand of god the father according to first john chapter 2 verse 1 we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous we have a priest friend in the presence of the Father, Jesus Christ, righteous Jesus. Again, basahin po natin itong Hebrews chapter 7, dun tayo sa verse 25. Consequently, He is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through Him, since He always lives to make intercession for them. Now, you have to remember that this is the letter to the Hebrews to Jewish Christians. Now, do you know, 
the Jewish rabbis or Jewish teachers believed that the work of interceding for us was the work of angels. And Hebrews corrected this, this wrong belief by declaring that Christ is better, that Christ is greater than the angels for they worship Him. Ang sabi nga rito eh, here, sabi ni Raymond Brown sa The Message of Hebrews, Christ above all. Here, yet again, Christ is portrayed as one who, as priest, exercises an intercessory role far superior to the angels in the Jewish tradition. He intercedes for us meaningfully, for unlike the angels, he has first-hand experience of our trials. Kaya nga siya nagkatawang tao eh. So that he would have first-hand experience of our trials. He interceded for us effectively or compassionately. For unlike the angels, he knows exactly what we need. And he intercedes for us effectively, for unlike the angels, he has the power to meet our needs. It is the same for us today. We don't need Mary, Peter, Paul, and the rest of the departed saints to pray for us. Oh, sila bi sa Bible. Sabi sa Bible, pray for one another. Take note, pray for one another. Hindi sinabing pray to one, one to another. Hindi sinabing pray to another believer or to other believers, especially dead believers. Because the Lord is our only divine intercessor before God. Anong sabi ulit? Since He always lives, to make intercession for them. Ano uli sabi nung ating quotation? Unlike the angels, he has first-hand experience of our trials. Unlike the angels, he knows exactly what we need. Unlike the angels, he has the power to meet our need. Now, maaaring yung mga naunang kristyano sa atin, yung mga binivenerate ngayon ng mga saints sa ating kinagis ng reliyon, Maral del tao rin silang katulad natin, they have experienced our tri the trials that we have experienced also. Pero, they, unlike the Lord, they don't know exactly what we need. Hindi naman sila omniscient. Hindi naman sila all-knowing. And unlike the Lord, they don't have the power to meet our need. Unlike the priests, Unlike the angels, unlike the dead believers, according to Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26, He is the kind of high priest we need because He is holy and blameless, unstained by sin. E si na Pedro, si na Paul, si Mary, meron naman po silang mga kasalanan. Si Mary nga, ang sabi niya, tinawag niya ang Diyos, My God, My Savior. Eh kung wala siyang kasalanan, hindi niya kailangan ng tagapagligtas. Pero ang Panginoon, walang kasalanan. He has been set apart from sinners and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. And not only that, according to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. So bakit pa tayo maghahanap? Why look for another intercessor other than the Lord Jesus? And we are assured, anong sabi dyan? Consequently, He is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God. Pansinin niyo yung salitang uttermost. No one can do that other than the Lord. Yung salitang uttermost, 
it can be translated completely. He is able to save completely, fully. He is able to save fully, absolutely. He is able to save absolutely those who draw near to God through Him. There is nothing that we could add to His saving work on the cross. And that is why we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. There is nothing that we could do to make His prayers for us more effective before the Father. At kung papansin ninyo, sabi ito, He is able to save to the uttermost. Ano po yung save? No? It is not just about eternal salvation. It is also about support that comes at each moment of trial. Kaya nga panin, naniniwala po tayo eh. He is able to save us from this health crisis also. He is able to sustain us during this lockdown. And that is why we must draw near to God through Him. That since Christ is our great high priest, anong sabi sa Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16? Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Kaya wag tayong mag-aatubiling lumapit sa trono ng ating mahabaging Diyos sapagkat doon kakamtan natin ang habag at kalinga sa panahon na kailangan natin ito. We are in a time of need we need his mercy don't hesitate don't be afraid don't be ashamed draw near to the throne of grace always remember his prayers are unlimited for his life is limitless again we are in a time of need we need god's mercy and so don't hesitate don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Draw near to God's throne of grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us draw near to God through our great high priest, our only mediator to God, our risen Lord and Savior. Tayo po manalangin. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for us and your resurrection has proven that your sacrifice for our sins has been accepted by the Father. We thank you Lord that we are not worshipping a dead Savior. We thank you that we are worshipping a living Savior. And I pray that we realize it's a great privilege to have you as our intercessor, our mediator, and that we will not look to anyone else except you, O Lord. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here who has not yet accepted you as Lord and Savior, I pray that from his heart he will pray something like this, Lord, I am a sinner. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I now accept you as my Lord and Savior. And for us who have accepted you, may we continue to draw near to you. We thank you for the assurance that we will find grace and mercy in our time of need. Thank you, Lord, that your prayers are unlimited because you are limitless. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and able to present us faultless before His glorious presence. To the only God, our Savior, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to Him be the glory, now and forever. Amen and Amen. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives 
All fear is gone Because I know He holds a future And life is worth the living Just because He lives God send His Son They called Him Jesus Just because he lives.